Electric cars are shockingly one very divisive topic nowadays. If you look back 25 years, the argument was that electric cars simply couldn't compete with internal combustion engines, and they couldn't. The best electric cars only had ranges of 40 to 60 miles. However, nowadays many electric cars are outperforming gas-powered cars on several metrics. Just look at the Tesla Model 3 versus the Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG. The Tesla can go 0 to 60 a half a second faster for 6 grand less. Or the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT, which goes 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds with a crazy cool interior for $70,000. When getting a similar level of performance and similar tech, means that you don't have to jump up to an SUV like the Audi RS Q8, which goes 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds, which is faster, but costs $123,000. You don't like cars? Well, even in the world of trucks, like the Ford F-150 Lightning and Rivian R1T, they're still bringing the heat to their internal combustion brothers. When it comes to acceleration and efficiency, it's hard to compete with what electric cars are offering these days. Because of this increase in quality, the debate has moved more into the question of, are electric cars actually better for the environment? Because let's be honest, if you're paying an extra $10,000 for your car, you at least want a warm fuzzy feeling that tells you that you're superior to those around you. I, I mean, doing a good thing for the environment. So in order to help you have a sense of moral superiority, regardless of if you're for or against electric cars, I've compiled all of the pros and cons and also written out an example situation to help determine if electric cars are actually better for the environment. Let's start with the pros. Also, if you're wanting to cherry pick evidence to argue with your friend and only want the cons, we'll talk about that too. The sections of the video are labeled in the video description beneath the like button. So knock yourself out. Pros of electric cars. First, zero emissions. While on the move, electric cars have a much lower carbon footprint than traditional cars, as they don't require any black gold, i.e. gas, to run. This means that electric cars have the potential to help reduce the number of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere, which many scientists believe can help mitigate the effects of climate change. This also can directly affect the air quality where you live. For example, in Utah, we have these things called inversions, where air currents keep all the pollution in the valley and thus make our skies perpetually gray during certain times of the year. If all the cars were electric, they would have much less pollutants to get trapped in the valley and for us to have to breathe in. Second, overall less pollution. Now this is where things get really interesting. People will say, you might not be letting out pollution when you're driving, but you still get your precious electricity from those coal power plants. So you're worse than me. Checkmate, liberal. Now the first issue with this is that Republicans are actually bigger supporters of Tesla than Democrats are, but that's neither here nor there. It is true that electric cars pull their energy from the grid, and although many proponents of a net zero emission society hope that our power sources will one day be fully sustainable, as it stands, they aren't. Even still, a giant coal power plant is more efficient than a thousand mini oil power plants stuffed inside of Toyota Camrys. This principle is well documented as the economies of scale. As something gets bigger, you can make more for lower costs, whether those costs refer to dollars or the amount of pollution created. The principle remains the same. We see this all the time in bulk discounts. This is why when you order 50 shirts from a company like Custom Inc, they charge you $12.27 a shirt, but when you order 500, they're able to only charge you $8.89 a shirt. This fact means that even if you're in a state with only 1% of its energy coming from renewable sources, you still are polluting less than your Jeep Wrangler driving neighbor. Third, reduce noise pollution. I think this one is fun because it looks at a different aspect of the environment. Electric cars aren't only good at reducing the amount of carbon in the air, but driving one is also much easier on your ears. While many car enthusiasts love the roaring noise of a gasoline engine that can be heard from blocks away, electric cars are silent as a mouse. Now, technically that expression does depend on which mouse you're talking about. If we're talking about Mickey, that boy is loud. My video on his company yelling at DeSantis in the media is linked right there. When comparing electric versus hybrid, the distinction is a bit smaller, but even still, as a general rule, if you're wanting to make sure you don't disturb the hummingbird when you pull out of your driveway in the morning, or just have a quieter street environment in general, electric is definitely the move. Now let's get into the reason why about a quarter of you guys are here, the cons. I say a quarter because I have a delusional belief that the majority of people really want to hear both sides of an argument and then make an informed decision. But we can psychoanalyze me later. Here we go. First, mortifying mines. Did you like that alliteration? The production of electric car batteries requires several metals, including some precious metals, as well as minerals such as nickel, cobalt, manganese, and lithium. The mining process of these minerals and metals oftentimes involves open pit or strip mining and other habitat destroying activities. We're talking the kind of stuff that Captain Planet would have had a field day over. So even though your neighborhood is quieter and cleaner, somewhere in Chile because of your car, it looks like this. Furthermore, the manufacturing process releases hazardous chemicals into the environment such as sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. Additionally, when these batteries reach the end of their useful life, the disposal of the batteries and recycling of their components can cause additional environmental problems. And although many venture capitalists are dumping money into the battery space, as it stands, the industry is still developing and widespread battery recycling is not common. Second, electric cars aren't the number one option. 
Depending on where you live, there may be several better options for the environment than an electric car. Many critics of electric cars feel like the biggest problem with them is that they just aren't enough. They fear that people think that buying an EV absolves them of their duty to the environment and that they won't engage in other activities that help protect our planet, like taking public transportation when available, walking, recycling, or other things like that. For example, with that pro of less pollution from earlier, if you're in a primarily coal-powered state like many in the Midwest, although an EV is better for the environment than a Jeep Wrangler, a Prius might be better than an EV depending on the numbers. Then again, you'd have to be driving a Prius and they look like trash. Except for the 2023 one, that one actually kind of looks like a normal car. You can check out that video right here. So if you're really wanting to save the environment, it looks like it's time for a hypothetical example. All right, we've got four friends. Train Tammy, who only takes public transit, EV Emily, who got herself a fancy nice EV, Hybrid Heidi, who has a plug-in hybrid, and Gas Gus, who has your standard gas car. And if you have a problem with my alliterations, please tell me in the comments. Please keep in mind here that a lot of these numbers vary by country of production, state in which you live, etc. We're going to be doing our best with the averages that we have access to. Alright, so the upfront cost of the environment are going to be highest with Emily, with an average of 90 grams of CO2 per mile coming from the actual production of the vehicle. Hybrid Heidi and Gas Gus come in below that, and Train Tammy comes in the lowest with zero grams of upfront cost because she's not buying the train. Don't worry, we're still going to include the carbon footprint of building the train in the final calculation. Now, even though Emily's upfront costs add significantly to her CO2 per mile, her overall contribution is only about 200 grams per mile. Heidi comes in with an overall contribution of 260 grams per mile, and then in the last place is Gus with 350 grams per mile. So electric cars are the best option even with the high upfront pollution costs, right? Well, not so fast. We forgot our good friend Tammy. Let's say that Tammy is riding in an old diesel powered train. Well, she'll be producing about 177 grams per mile, and that's including the upfront production costs. Better than even the electric car. And if she's on one of those new electric trains, she might be producing as little as 120 grams per mile. Once again, you can rework these numbers based off of different states or specific models of cars, but the general trend holds true. Electric cars are better for the environment than gas ones. However, if your number one concern is for the environment, then you'd probably be best off riding public transportation, biking, or walking. Ultimately, however you decide to get around, whether it be by bus, bike, BMW, or biplane, the most important thing is that you make an informed decision. EVs are usually better for the environment, but it's really up to each of us to decide if the 150 grams of CO2 per mile we save is worth the increase in upfront price, or if we could walk or bike or do something else that's slightly more sustainable. There are other considerations as well when it comes to electric cars, like if there's gonna be enough chargers or if we know where the power is coming from. A while back, someone suggested that our roads should be turned into solar panels to solve that very problem. Spoiler alert, it still hasn't happened. Click on my video right here to find out what happened to solar freaking roadways. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.